Um, wanted to introduce myself, uh, Elias Guimaras. I'm the CEO of the company Progen Cell, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about stem cells. And uh, I want to start. Uh, sorry about the time. We were waiting for some more people, but I think it's the right time to start. Okay. Uh, so uh, today we're going to be talking about who we are, what do we do, uh, how do stem cells work, the science behind stem cells, uh, then who's a good candidate for, for a procedure, uh, a little bit of a patient experience, what happens, we have testimonial with us today, so it's gonna be interesting, you're gonna have a lot of questions to talk to them. Uh, a little bit of the regulation in Mexico and what is accepted and what is not and uh, what is medical tourism, a little bit about that. And then we're gonna have a session of questions and answers. Uh, we're gonna stay around over here, whatever you need, we're gonna be here for you, okay? Uh, first of all, who is Progen Cell? Uh, Progen Cell is a team uh, of professionals, uh, specialists that we're treating degenerative diseases. That's what, what, what we're doing. And we do it through using stem cells and our goal is improving quality of life. That's what, what we really are into, okay? So I wanna ask you to know you a little bit better. Uh, what is quality of life for you? Like, what do you think it is? Okay, anyone? Anyone can tell me what is it for you? Come on, don't be shy. Just it's enjoying your day. Enjoying your day, day to day. Enjoying your day to day, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, so enjoying day to day. Getting so, better with age. <laughs> yes, stay healthy, right? You know, yeah. Energy. So, uh, some people tell me that for them, quality of life is living without pain, doing the activities that they love to do, uh, practice the sports and the hobbies that you, they used to do and they're not doing it anymore. Uh, going through our daily activities without a hassle. Some people have to do stuff every day and they have a, like problems doing it, limitations. Uh, spending time with the people and the, the things that they choose to do and not what their health limits them to do. Or if they have to talk to the doctor like every often and they don't want to do that, right? That's cool. quality of life, right? And avoiding medication that harms yourself if you like keep doing that medication over and over and over at some point your liver your kidney it's going to be a uh, like not so healthy right uh, by the way i'm not a doctor okay <laughs> i'm an engineer i i run like the, the business side of of the of progen cell and later we're gonna have our doctor to explain all the the science behind it so if I don't talk with the medical terms, it's like for everyone to understand the way I understand stem cells. That's a good right? thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's better, right? You don't get want to get confused. So how stem cells work? Stem cells work by regenerating tissue. So what happens? At the beginning, we have some damaged tissue. That tissue starts to send signals, okay, chemical signals, and then our stem cells that we have in, in our body just detects them and they go to that place, that's like a homing thing, and they engraft over there. Once they engraft over there, they start multiplication and they differentiate into that kind of tissue where they engrafted. And with that differentiation, they, they become the same tissue and that's like a repair. And it's, it's happening all the time with us. Like, um, when there is balance in our body, we are losing cells, we are losing tissue, and at the same time is being repaired by our, st our stem cells. But what happens when we get sick, like when we get out of balance, what happens is that our tissue gets damaged faster than our stem cells can repair it. So uh, the body doesn't release <coughs> enough stem cells that it's being produced in our own and, and that's why we get out of balance. And that's a chronic disease. Like once that it keeps happening that, you don't get better, you don't get better. Um, 
We're going to talk a little bit about the nature of stem cells. So I'm going to bring Dr. Gavino uh, to the stage <laughs> so he can talk about the medical terms. And then I'm going to come a little bit later and we're going to be talking about other stuff. OK, so here is Dr. Gavino with us. <laughs> Thank you. Well, before I begin, I, I'd like to really give you a thank you for taking the time to be here to learn a little bit about stem cell. <coughs> and let me begin with the idea that our body has the resources <coughs> to heal itself. We have to help it. How we can help our body to repair itself? One way is by using the stem cells, as Elias was saying in the previous picture. If, the loss, if we lost balance, or if we lost the equilibrium, then our body lost the ability to repair. Why? Because it doesn't release enough stem cell to repair the damage that Elias was mentioned on the cycle of repair. Now, what is a stem cell? Why our body have those cells and sometimes not enough? Because the cells have some potential benefit, but it's not the year for everything. That's the issue with the stem cells. The main thing is, it's a cell that has the capability to renew herself. That means it produces new stem cells through life. Since we grow as an embryo to the time that we die, our body produces those cells. Then, it's possible that because it has been renewing time by time by time. The other possibility is those cells have the ability to transform themselves to different kind of cells. When the damage, injured, for example, lungs or heart, the stem cell has the ability to transform on the, on the cells that those organ needs is the other possibility. And how they do that? Because they have to travel all over around the body and find the place to, that have the damage and take home. It's, it means to be there, to stay there, to start with the repair that that organ needs. Is what the stem cells means. That's what we understand for stem cells. If we take about sources, nowadays we know that there exist only two types of stem cells. One is embryonic stem cells. Those cells are created from an embryo up to eight weeks of growing or development after fertilization. But in Mexico, in, in most part of the world, are forbidden for different reasons, ethical, legal list reason and different things. That's why we don't consider those cells as an option to treat the patient. The other option that we have are adult stem cells. It makes no different where we get those cells. All of those are gonna be adult stem cells. Even when they came from or blood, placenta, that some people say those are embryonic stem cells. That's not true. Not true. That's, and those cells remain being adult stem cells. Of course, we can get stem cells from adipose tissue. If a person is going to be under uh, liposuction and they're going to remove two, three, four pounds of fat, then we can use that fat to process and get the stem cell from there. The problem with those, with those two sources is it has to be manipulated. It means it needs to be under a process with chemical substance, centrifugation, or different process to get ready to use those stem cells. Then, what option we have? Well, there's the bone marrow. The bone marrow is the main source of the stem cells all life of the human being. 
it is produced there continuously, it is renewed there, and there are it in a special environment to maintain the healthiness of the cell. Then, bone marrow, nowadays, is becoming the only source available without processing. Minimal manipulation and a, pro a procedure that can be done at one day in a clinical facility. We choose to work with bone marrow because different reasons. Those are the main ones, of course. It's easier to get, it's possible to use it. But really important also is because the cells that are inside the bone marrow. Bone marrow, in fact, is a complexity of cellularity. It doesn't have just the cells that are going to produce blood cells, not just going to produce red blood cells. It doesn't going to produce just white blood cells. It also has some other cells in the inner part of the bone that shows different capability and different possibilities to repair different tissues and organs. That's why we use bone marrow stem cells, not just because they're easy to get, it's possible to use them, but that's the other reason. By knowing that, in knowing that our body takes those bone marrow stem cells from the reserve that we have mm -hmm. and travel to all the body, to different organs. For example, to develop red blood cells, I was saying something at the bowel and steps in the brain or heart. By knowing that, we have developed the technique to use and to get a large number of stem cells from the bone and use to allow the body to improve those different conditions. Those conditions, we divide it in five main groups. One of those groups is metabolic condition. There we have diabetic, heart failure, liver failure, and also gives some benefit on renal or kidney failure. That's one part of the group of the disease that has been chose benefit with the stem cell. The other group is autoimmune disease. I mean, when our same body, where our immune system produces the damage to our body, it gives, the stem cell give the possibility, let's say, to reset that immune system, allow them to work properly, stop the progression of the disease, and those damage that are possible to improve, they improve. For example, on rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, fibromyalgia, and psoriasis artritis, and also in Jogren syndrome. It's possible to improve those conditions. Continue with the other group, the third group are neurodegenerative diseases. Some of them, are really well known, for example, multiple sclerosis, that has different components. But at the end, the damage is at the brain, or, I mean, the central nervous system, which includes brains and the spinal cord. Producing for, for the losing of some substance that our body, that their body have the damage, and that's why it's possible to improve because the cells travel to those areas and start restart the activity on those areas with the damage. Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, and also we have another group, problem with the eye. Different problems, but it's not, again, are not the solution to everything. It's possible to improve maculopathy, diabetic retinopathy, which means the damage inside the eye produced by diabetic problems, and also a genetic problem that we call retinitis pigmentosa is a progressive disease where the patient is losing the sight from the outside part to the inner, and gradually, at the end, those patients get blind if we don't do nothing. 
steps that have the possibility to diminish the speed, to stop the progression, and sometimes to improve that the condition of those patients. The last groups that we have are orthopedic problems. There, where are proving more effectiveness are in large joints. For example, at the knee, the elbow, the shoulder, and the ankle. To, to apply directly into those joints, the stem cells, allow them to regenerate the arteries with that, stop the process, the damage, and start getting more mobility, less pain, and allow the patient to regain activity. Now, on, the, on those five groups, I have been talking to for patients that have an illness per se. But we have some other patients that they ask for different procedures, but they are not ill. Then they, it has been used for phase rejuvenation, an anti-aging process. We prefer to call healthy aging because one thing is, no one is getting younger. That's for sure. Then we grow old since the time that we born, we're getting old. Then a healthy aging in the, in the general is called anti-aging. It means trying to stop the effect of aging to gain the possibility to maintain the strain, the cognitive possibility to realize all the job that we are doing. That's what it means, anti-aging. And lately, lately I mean a few years to now, we have been using stem cells for erectile dysfunction with a really good benefit for the patient and the wife. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what are some goals we have? <laughs> the, our main goal is to improve quality of life. And that's possible. Of course, it's not a guarantee, but it's a really high possibility to get better with the stem cells. That's the result that we're having. And the way that we are doing the procedure is a procedure with minimal risk it's really safe because the stem cells that we use are mainly from the same patient we are getting from the bone marrow that imply no risk about the stem cells. Of course, we are using needles here and there. We are using local anesthesia. We are using different substances that those substances have the risk to produce sometimes some reaction. I mean, there are no medical procedure 100% without risk. Are those that have the minimal risk that is possible? And that's what we're considering that we are doing. By doing that, we are getting the most of a patient to receive a benefit. How much? It depends on the patient. Because, unfortunately, we are not getting the server so for everyone. We had patients that their improvement was zero, honestly. We have a 50 patient with that. We have patients that improve five, 10%. It's an improvement that sometimes doesn't sound to me enough. But honestly, we also have patients that have been improving 30%, 50%, even higher. A patient that gained the possibility to back to board to take the normal life, to be playing sport. I mean, it's possible to achieve that with the stem cells. And that's what we're getting. Now, what changed the result? One thing is bone marrow condition. Because we are talking about chronic disease. It's not the same to see a patient who had six months to a year with, the, with one illness, whatever you consider on the list that I showed you before, to a patient that has 20 or 25 years with the same illness, of course, using different 
substance through time, bone marrow loss, the quality. That's what it makes the difference among the patient. And uh, when a patient has more than one illness, because imagine, just to give you the idea, that we are using 100 cells to treat one condition, one illness. When we apply those 100 cells, then we're gonna travel to the site where the injured, it, and all those cells are gonna try to be repairing, improving the damage. But if the same, if the same patient has five different conditions, and we are using 100 cells, then 20 cells are gonna be trying to get every one of them. I mean, the result at the end won't be easy, it won't be the same. That's what is giving you the different outcome on the patient. And of course, the last one is something that we have no control of. Because if the patient have it, are the patient have it? We have been having several number of patients, sorry, <clears throat> that, for example, diabetic patient, that we do the procedure, and as soon as we finish, they go out of the clinic, they go and take the shirt, a big cake, <laughs> big soda, and ice cream. I mean, no? They think it's or, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now they feel that they are ready to get it because they already received stem cell, now they're ready to do the other thing. Oh, That's not. Okay. Or patients who have uh, liver damage because alcohol consumption. If we do the procedure, we improve their liver. Now, if they continue having alcohol consumption, at the end, the benefit is gonna be lost, right, right. for sure. That's what is really important, that the patient will meet with himself about the benefit. It's not something just that we did or we do with the patient. We, we have a phrase that we use with the patient that at the end, the hero is the patient, because he's the one who has to be under the procedure, that has to take good care of themselves, to follow diet, to do exercise, to take all account, because at the end, who's gonna get the benefit is the patient. That's the goal, his improvement. Um, a little while ago, I was talking about some risk. Speaking about the cells, there are some risks involved in different with the other procedures. I will say, in the way that we are doing, the risks are minimal. The risk that we can have is an infection, because I will mention, we use needle, and we use a special needle that is a little bit wider than where the images that we have. If a patient, for example, after the procedure, get into a pool, and some water run into that tiny hole, there is some risk to have an infection or the patient doesn't take care of that injury for one or two days, of that hole of one or two days, then the risk to have an infection is present because that reason. And the other, the most common discomfort that the patient experience with this is some bruises, minor, sometimes on the donor side, and of course, some discomfort. The patient referred to um, like a, any an achiness when they hit a furniture and you have some dull pain, something for two or three days. It's the worst scenario that they can experience. Autologous mean your own stem cells. If we use stem cells from another source, that's what we call allergenic condition because then we have the possibility to transmit some genetic disease and uh, some tissue rejection, allergy reaction, not just to the dead cells, to the cell itself, it's possible to have some allergic reaction. And when we use allogenic stem cells, we have to get it usually from a bank, from a cryo preserve source. When they get those cells out of the prison, put it that way, 
if they give us a hundred million, thirty percent of those are gonna be there. That means we're gonna apply thirty thirty million of dead cells to that patient. How will I react to those dead cells, that body? Sometimes it are severe conditions that happen. That's why we avoid those conditions by using autologous bone marrow. And of course, the risks are similar because anyway, we have to use needles here and there if we are using allergenic. Some bruise or allergic reaction. When the patient experiences the destruction of those dead cells, they feel sick. Some light flux symptoms related to that. And that's what it happened. And remember, we're talking about human stem cells and adult stem cells in particular. Those risks are even higher if we use stem cells from not human animals. No. <laughs> I mean, nowadays, even here at the States, they are often some charred stem cells, some lamb stem cells. Nowadays, I mean, today, we have human stem cells from 40 years. Why to use any other? Okay. Now, who is a candidate for a stem cells treatment, for a stem cell therapy? Almost every person, we are focused more on patients who have a chronic disease. That has been our main goal, to improve those conditions. Uh, the age is not always uh, present. It's usually considered more in adults. I mean, in Mexico, 18 and older, but there are, there are two or three conditions that have been treated in pediatric patient. Autism, cerebral palsy, those are the main conditions that have been used on younger patients. In diabetic type one also, that appear really young. And the other thing is, we choose not to treat cancer patients for many reasons. The main one is, we are trying to get the regrowth of the cells with what we're doing. The stimulus that we give the body is with the idea to increase the number of cells. If a patient has a tumor, there is a minor chance that that tumor reacts with what we do and it grows. That's why we don't use in cancer patients. Okay? Then, when the best time to use it? <clears throat> to do the stem cell therapy. Before it gets worse. All the illness have different stages. If we, let me use a phrase. If we get a patient on the first few stages, the result is gonna be a lot better on that condition. If that patient wait until the last stage when there is no other option, sometimes surgery and sometimes not even that. Stem cells don't, don't gonna change either. Are not uh, miraculous. It, it, it seems to be, but I know that way. Okay. Then the other thing is, I, I was speaking about chronicity of the illness, different treatment. Sometimes the patients get damage related to the medication that they use through time. Then it's better to apply stem cells when the patient doesn't have that damage. For example, cortisone. It is well known that cortisone damage different areas of our body. But in our point of view, damage <coughs> the bone marrow. Then when the patient receives several on shot through several years, at the end, the quality of the bone marrow is gonna be really poor. Then the benefit that, that that patient can have is not as high as we want to. And hopefully you find that interesting. Mm -hmm. Again, thank you for being here. Um, if you have some questions, I will be glad to answer at the end.
of this presentation, and we continue with Elias. And thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, we have a guest that it was it is our patient, and I want to introduce him to you so he can talk about his experience coming to Tijuana to do stem cell therapy and talk about his case. So his name is Tony. Please come on up. And, and you can do as many questions as you need. <laughs> Thank, you. Yes. Thank you, Tony. Thank you Thank for you. being here. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so yes, my name's Tony Colligogan. I actually grew up here in Paradise Hills. Um, I was a college football player at Southwestern College and I went into a dance class for football. You were in that class, Robert, I didn't know you were here. Um, and I went on to become a professional dancer. I moved to New York, danced with Alvin Ailey, danced on Broadway, danced on TV films with Paul Abdul. And here I am now in my 50s, paying the price for all the running and dancing I've been doing. So my joints have been wearing out. I'm a patient of Dr. Katherine Robertson at UCSD Sports Medicine. And she did surgery on my left knee in 2015. I had a torn meniscus. It's still torn, but she just cut off what was hanging. Uh, and she's um, at age 29. I already suffered with chondromalacia of the patella, which means your kneecaps are wearing out of cartilage. So I've been suffering with this for, I just turned 58. So I've been suffering with that for 38 years. Um, I was also, um, just, you know, earlier they talked about the quality of life. So I was at a point now where my quality of life was being affected in a negative way. So what does that mean? It means that I was thinking of retiring. <laughs> I wasn't going to teach dance anymore. I teach salsa, bachata at UC San Diego. Um, I teach jazz. And um, I love dancing. But I couldn't do it anymore because I was in so much pain from my knees. I was taking pain medication. I was taking anti-inflammatory medications to keep the inflammation down, but then those had negative side effects on my liver, and then I also developed colitis from being very, very, very acidic. Um, so as you can see, I tried chiropractic, acupuncture, herbs. I mean, I tried, if there's something that exists, I tried it. Um, so I was um, begging Dr. Catherine Robertson, please put me in a stem cell study. I know everyone's doing research on stem cells. So she said I was too healthy because I took care of myself. So then, thanks God, I met uh, Elias through I met my friend Amanda, who actually was one of my students at UC San Diego. Amanda's an entrepreneur, businesswoman. And so I knew that there were some things happening in Mexico that were very beneficial that they can't yet do in the United States. And I had done all my due diligence and research, spoke to doctors, surgeons, therapists. Um, I found out that the United States is about 15 years behind in terms of being approved for certain procedures. Mm -hmm. And then I met with Dr. Davino, I met with Elias, and I'm like, you know, I'm, if I'm gonna invest in something, I'm gonna invest in something that's gonna give me a quality life and longevity. I also am a golfer, I love to play golf. Um, and so, one of the turning points was I couldn't play golf anymore. So I'm like, okay, I gotta do something. So I went ahead, I came down for a consultation, I thought about it, I looked at other stem cell procedures in the United States, they were charging a lot more money mm -hmm. for not the same procedure, and you have to really check and see because there, there's some procedures out there that are not, there's not gonna be a benefit. Um, the, long and the, sh the long and the short story is, after my procedure um, with Progen, about three days later, I noticed that the pain was going away. Um, I had some tenderness because they did, and I was awake during the procedure. I, they took the bone marrow out, just like he described. They put it back in my knee joints, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to be a good boy. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to eat bad food. I'm going to be um, stay on my alkaline diet to keep inflammation down. And I want to say 10 days after, um, I'm gonna demonstrate with this chair because this is how I used to get up on yeah. the chair with my arm. Yeah. Now I can do this like a hundred times without pain. 
So I don't and if you go to the bathroom, you know how hard if you have bad knees, getting off is not fun. <laughs> Sorry, but that's the truth, right? <laughs> yeah, you got bars on the side. So now I feel like my knees have gotten much stronger. It's been uh, December, January, February. So it's only been three months mm -hmm. since my procedure, and now I can dance salsa, I can spin for four hours a day, I can walk five miles on the golf course without pain afterwards. So I'm very grateful. Thank you, Elias. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to make a comment. I saw his pictures before. Tony shared it on Facebook. So I saw his stuff when he's going through. So what he's saying is true. I've seen how it was before too. He is now. So God bless, man. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so back to me. So besides stem cells, we're going to talk around what a procedure looks like and what, what all, all the factors around it. So what happens in Mexico? In Mexico, it's not like the Wild West that you can do anything. Uh, we have to follow some regulation. And we follow COFEPRIS. COFEPRIS is the FDA from Mexico. Okay? To do this procedure, to do stem cells, you need several licenses. <coughs> and this is our licenses, but I want you to see like the left side of the screen. Uh, you need like a license for the clinic, yeah, uh, to have like a surgery room. Then you need a pharmacy license if you're going to have some pharmaceuticals over there. You need a stem cell license and you need a protocol approved in order to use the stem cell license. Mm -hmm. So it's not easy. And in order to have all those licenses, you need to have some IRVs supervising what you're doing. So we have like the research ethical research committee we have the an, another research committee one is in combioetica one is in cofepris uh, there is a transplant in, um, committee and there is like a transfusion committee and you need to have all of those to have the kind of license that we have so it's it's not easy uh, it's very hard to keep on with them like during the years uh, we started projects so on 2008, 2009, uh, so uh, so it's been a long journey. It's it's not easy. There are some doctors over there that they think that it's pretty easy, so they buy cells from somewhere and they inject it, mm -hmm. and I don't think that's a good idea. It's not that safe. Uh, it, it it's it doesn't don't they don't have the license. They can get in trouble. Uh, so uh, that's why we try to do it the right way. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, what is accepted to be done in Mexico? So whenever you have a protocol, Cofepris gives you authorization to do that protocol. So uh, you're able to do whatever the government lets you do. <laughs> uh, there's no use of embryonic stem cells. Yeah, the, that, the, those are prohibited. There's no protocol around that. And also something called like stem cell complete transplant. Uh, something authorized is like when someone has some cancer that they do radiation and uh, chemotherapy. At the end, they need to recover and bring back the patient, uh, their immune system. So they do a complete transplant. They, they immunosuppress, that's a hard word, <laughs> the, the immune system and they wipe it out, and that's the way to bring back the patient and the, their immune system. Uh, so in Mexico, uh, all the things that we mentioned, uh, that's something that we can do. Uh, it's, uh, it's not a cure for all. We never talk about cure. We, we say like improving quality of life because uh, we haven't seen a cure completely. And uh, there's some doctors using stem cells for other stuff that, that really doesn't work. So I'll be very careful to do the due diligence into research. If you ever go through a stem cell therapy, it's, it's very important to know where you're going. Uh, before going to that, I've heard also here in the United States, in Florida and here in California, some people injecting stem cells inside the eye globe 
and and they got like uh, blind they they went blind uh, there are some doctors that they don't evaluate their patients that well they take people like 95 year old and in a very bad shape and they had some complication and sometimes it doesn't end well. <laughs> so what is it that we do at Progen Cell? We do own stem cells taken from bone marrow. We can use uh, adipose. Uh, we can use fat to take the stem cells from there. Uh, we do anti-aging, healthy aging programs. And we also have a little lab where we can do cell expansion and cryopreservation. So uh, if the patient even took very well the aspiration of the bone marrow the first time, we can concentrate the cells, we can cryopreserve them for future procedures. Okay. A little bit about medical tourism. What is it? Like medical tourism is traveling to another place for medical reasons, right? Uh, thousands of people are traveling all over the world to different places uh, and to Mexico or Tijuana specifically, we have a lot of people going for dental work. Uh, they go for bariatric surgery, cosmetic surgery, stem cells, and then other reasons too. Uh, why patients are traveling? Mainly cost, yeah. Uh, it, maybe it's 25% the cost doing it in Mexico than in the United States. Uh, there is also the insurance problem. Some people don't have enough insurance, so they don't have insurance. They're going to pay out of pocket, so they rather do it in Mexico. Availability. So people like in Canada, patients that we get from from Canada, they have to wait several months yeah. until they get seen by a doctor or having their knee surgery. So sometimes they come, we get like a knee injection. They get better for a few years and. If we, if we can push forward a uh, knee replacement or something that would be like, great for that patient. Uh, we had a, a patient with kidney failure and she was needing a, a kidney transplant. But in the meanwhile, it was going to take like long. She wanted to do stem cells mm -hmm. to be in better shape for whenever they get the, whenever she was getting the knee, the kidney. Uh, Time constraints, it's also same thing, yeah. Uh, time constraint as a Canada example, yeah. Quality of service, there are some people that they don't like the medical service in their country, that they say that they don't take enough time to talk to the doctor, they are just like a file in a cabinet, and uh, the service in Latin America, in, in Tijuana, it's like very personal, we get to know the patient, we get to give them enough time. You have access to the doctor by phone, you can call them. So that, that kind of service, that's also a big factor. For us living in San Diego, we should take advantage of having Tijuana just around the corner. Uh, it's, it's very easy to get there. Uh, what's a typical patient journey? How, how, what happens when someone is interested in, in doing medical tourism? So the first thing is the patient starts looking and contacts the clinic. A patient and the clinic, they go back and forth getting all the information from each other. They get files, they get like med medical files, they get all the information, how to get there, where are you, who the doctor is, get all the information from, from each other. Then with that information, the case it has to be evaluated, like nobody would like to travel without knowing that he's a candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, some people do, but <laughs> don't do that. Uh, you have to be um, a candidate and you want to have your case evaluated in order, uh, like in our, in our case, we reject a lot of patients. Some people will call, will have the evaluating the case uh, and they used to have cancer or they, they having a problem with their back that they need surgery that it's not a candidate for for stem cells for it. so we reject a lot of patients I hate that on sales but I think that's the honest thing to do so that's what we do and then you get a quotation and with that quotation you know how much is are you gonna spend 
And then you have to take into consideration the traveling cost. If we live in San Diego, it's very easy you know, to drive there. But people coming, we have people coming from Oregon or for Florida or for you know, Kansas, like <laughs> different places. So you have to take into consideration air travel and meals and lodging, so on. Uh, <clears throat> typically, the clinic that you're talking to, they're going to help you coordinate the transportation and accommodations. Uh, if you're coming with a companion, uh, what can the companion do, what to see on the place, where to meet, uh, they help you a lot with that. Uh, then patient travels, and when they travel, the clinic usually has some kind of support. So we're gonna, like us, we're gonna pick you at the airport. We're gonna drive you. You, you don't have to be driving around Tijuana without knowing mm -hmm. where to go or what places not to go. <laughs> uh, so we, we have some support. We bring you to the hotel, and then we have some relationship over there. So if you have any questions, they have our number. Uh, so it's, it's very efficient, yeah. Then you go through the medical procedure, and after medical procedure, the patient travels back home. And when they travel back home, also they have some support from the logistics department called concierge. And very important, after going back home, uh, we usually follow up with the patient. Uh, so that way we can know what are, what's happening with the patient. We, we follow up seven days, like a month, and then 30 days, 60 days. In some other clinics, as I was telling you, some shady places where they're just going to go inject and, and, you, and you're done. <laughs> if you go back and you have a problem, you don't have anyone to talk to, or you, if you got complications, it, 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 it gets messy. <laughs> Uh, so if someone would like to do uh, medical travel, medical tourism, where do you start? <laughs> it's sometimes difficult because people say, well, I don't know anybody in Tijuana and I don't know who to choose. I don't want to get uh, like in a bad situation with the doctor or charging me more than they have to or, or choosing a bad doctor. So uh, first of all, you have to choose a clinic. It satisfies your needs, that it takes care of your specific disease. Uh, you have to choose someone uh, that it charges like financially works for you, that it's geographically where you want to go. Some people would like to travel to India for some reason, or they want to go to Turkey to do some kind of treatments. So uh, we had patients living in San Diego, going to Germany to get stem cells, and they're coming back when they find out that they, that is available just across the border then it started to make sense for them um, then the second step would be to contact the clinic get all the information specifically i suggest to ask for doctor's name doctor's information and the address of the clinic uh, because if they don't have an address or they can't give you doctor name then it starts to feel Funny. If they ask for the money up front before giving you information or evaluating your case, maybe they're more interested in the business side than in actually in the health of the patient. So be careful with that. Uh, after that, you have all the information. I uh, should just get your medical files all together if you have x rays or blood works from the past, reports, and that's what you're going to be sending to the clinic so they can evaluate your case. And, and after that, you schedule, you, you schedule like a phone consultation or you go to the clinic to a physical uh, consultation. Uh, so you can see the clinic and that way you know where you're going to get your procedure done. Yeah. And sometimes people travel from far without looking at the doctor or at the clinic. And when they get there, they get surprised or where you're going to get treated. And that's not fun. <laughs> um, so by the way, today all of you that, that, that you're here, uh, we're going to give you a free consultation uh, whenever you, you decide at the end of the, of the talk, somebody's going to uh, get to talk to you and, and if you want to schedule some consultations, it's going to be free for you for being here today.
Thank you very much. <laughs> so where are we? We are located, Project Center is located across the border, like one minute away. It's, it's really, really, really close. Uh, it's a walking distance. Uh, it's a very safe area. It's called Zona Rio. And uh, it's very simple. This is the uh, crossing of the border on San Isidro. Mm -hmm. And you just like go in as, as uh, when you go down the bridge, there's like a Costco over here. <laughs> and we're just in front of Costco. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be moving from here to somewhere over here. Ba -ba -ba. Where am I? Che, Brother Kino. So we're gonna be moving over here very soon, <laughs> very soon. So we're gonna be uh, we're building a new facility in a very big uh, medical plaza, and this is gonna be like a, a huge building, thirty story high. They have a hotel, they have some food, they have X rays, lab, everything on the same place. So it's gonna be easier for our patients to go there. So we're gonna be moving over there. Maybe in uh, two months, I hope. <laughs> uh, a little, some pictures about our facility. This is our surgery room. Uh, this is our observation room. This is where people will wait or family members will wait uh, before going through a procedure and after of the procedure. So the nurse is going to be coming over here to take all your information. <laughs> This is our exploration room, like before going into a procedure, you need like a physical and you're gonna be talking to Dr. Gavino, Dr. Romero or someone and this is where it happens. <laughs> this is our lobby, this is the waiting area in the beginning. And uh, okay, so uh, our team of doctors, Dr. Romero and Dr. Gavino, uh, put together a book with general information about stem cell, like a little guide of w what happens in each of the illnesses that, that we treat. They talk a little bit about what is the stem cell, what's the difference between one and the other. So uh, we have some books over there we don't have for everyone, but if someone is interested, please ask for it. Uh, you can buy it at Amazon like for $25, but we're going to be free for whoever is interested today. So we have some of uh, over there. So um, this is the end of the talk. Uh, this is our team again. Sorry, Dr. Gavino, not smiling. <laughs> uh, and this is our, our team. Uh, uh, so now we're going to start like a question and answer session. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to, to do so. If you have something private that you want to talk in private, uh, don't ask now. <laughs> Come with us l uh, later. We're going to stay here for a little while. Uh, our team is going to talk to you a little bit if you, want, if, you, if you want to schedule an appointment or if you have a specific question or something, they're going to be moving around. Okay. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, please go ahead. So, um, so how do you actually extract the, the bone marrow? bone marrow is within the bone, so how do you get to the bone marrow? And then, so if you take, extract the bone marrow from there, are there any side effects that will happen to that area? Okay, <clears throat> we need to put a needle at the inner part of the bone, at the center of the bone. That's how we get. We aspirate the bone marrow, it's, it's a liquid form, like blood, a little bit more thick, and uh, what we get, that amount is replenished in four weeks about after the procedure. I mean, your own body will remake. remake the same number in about four weeks. At the end, there is no side effects on that part. The only is the tiny hole that we do with the, with the needle, two millimeters about. So there's no drilling through the bone or anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, in fact, it's not a drilling thing, but it's something that we do by, by hand. Mm -hmm. We need to feel it. I mean, to drill, mm -hmm. someone in somewhere, they are using, actually, a drill mm -hmm. to get into the board. But they lost the, the sensation, the feeling to find the best place for what we are looking for. I, I so, want to add 
that this is done in local anesthesia. <laughs> so it's not it's not painful. There's a discomfort over there because they're using needles. I talk to patients all the time at the end of the procedure to ask them what do they feel and the, and what was the level of discomfort. So between one and 10, most people say a three, a four. Uh, some people have a little more tolerance, some people are less, but it's, it's just comfortable for a few seconds and then it's okay. And after a few days, you can feel like you did like bump into a table, like a little bruise, that in two days, it's gone. And it's something for like a knee or shoulder, so you would take that bone marrow and then you would inject that into the shoulder or the knee into the area that's affected? Yeah, in fact, joints are a cavity. What we put in there, it doesn't go anywhere. We fill them up, let's put it that way. Then it's possible to apply at the knee and shoulder directly to the joint. And the benefit that we're looking there is to repair the damage of the calcus. Sometimes with the meniscus is here or there is something else. The option is a combination of programs. To repair the damage of the that is the objective. So if you have like a torn tendon, is that anything that this we can help with? If it's a hundred percent torn, it needs to be repaired by another means. If it's a partial tear that weaknesses, then we apply it to strengthen the, that, the tendon. It depends the damage. That's why the result is different in every case. But if it's hundred percent torn. There is necessary some other option sometimes. And after, the experience is, for example, at the shoulder, the rotator cuff here, when it's repaired, the outcome improves 30% if we apply stem cells after surgery. Mm. About 34%. I mean, depending on the damage, you know. But it needs surgery. It's impossible to repair just by stem cells. Yeah. Is the removal of the stem cells and the reinjection of it all done in the same day? Yes. When we use autologous, fresh, full mouth, yes. What happens is sometimes the quality of the bone marrow is not that good. Then we use the other option to prior preservation. We go to a different process. But the most of, it, of the cases, we get the bone marrow. And at the same time the patient is in the surgical room, we get it back. If it's at the shoulder, if it's intravenous, it depends the patient on this. But it's usually at the same procedure type. So what are you taking from, I'm sorry, you go in the hip, the thigh, where are you going? Well, uh, if it's gonna be a systemic procedure, that means we want gonna apply it intravenously, we get it usually from the back part of the hip, about this point. If we're gonna apply just at the knee, we get it just a little bit beneath the knee and then from that, from that point. Okay. okay. It depends on the condition that we're gonna use. What about if it's gonna be the shoulder, usually we use the hip. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. One question right here and over there. Are you patients with uh, multiple sclerosis? Yes. Okay, and how that works? Uh, it gives a really good benefit to most of the patients. Again, we need to consider the damage or the severity of the condition that the patient has, but we have really good results on... Uh, so what, what do you take <coughs> the uh, from? From the hip. And we use a combination therapy there because we use the intravenous uh, and also intrapical, which means directly to the spinal fluid travel. And by two ways, we attack the, the problem. Okay. Okay. I, Just to add to <laughs> a little bit yeah, more to the answer, um, my mother has multiple sclerosis and she is doing fine, thank God and she went through this process and uh, i'm very happy that actually she's here it's just behind you <laughs> if you have some questions about ms 
she can tell you how uh, what's the benefit that happened to her okay and feel free to talk to her <laughs> So you have another. Yeah. So the question I had: If you go through one session, let's say for the knee, and the result is not <coughs> maybe just maybe as not as much, is it possibility that maybe by the second or third session it will improve, or is that something that is just deeply depends? No. In fact, our advice, because we are talking about chronic disease, our advice is to repeat the procedure. One procedure give some results, sometimes really good, and the patient doesn't want anymore, okay? But the most of the cases, when they arrive to the clinic, the problem is severe. Then we need to repeat the procedure. Let's say for the knee, every six months, unless three times, and moving from there. I mean, it varies. And then also the other question is, the duration of, let's say, treatment, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't get the... Every session that you do, for example, the results that you get, mm. you're happy with. And yeah. it lasts for, they say about a year, some less, some more. Is it a time frame? Or is it just it's not a time frame. I mean, but we have patients from 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and they're still doing fine. So it just depends on the person. They depend on the person, depend on the result, they depend on the gamma, they depend on the unit. I mean, sometimes... The habits, sure. wrong habits. Yeah, I'm doing that 20 years, huh? And we, we have the experience, of course, mm -hmm. to develop for yourself. We have a little bit of background. It wasn't just mm -hmm. an idea to put that clinic mm -hmm. and, and we're here. Mm -hmm. We have to grow all different things. <laughs> and you know? yeah. Just to add a little bit more to the credit, to the answer, uh, since we follow up with patients, we talk to them. We have patients that after they do like one treatment after four months they do another treatment and then we don't see them again and they uh, after the follow-up after two years they come back saying you know what i starting to feel that tickling that i had at the beginning so i went into another procedure and that way they have like a maintenance type of program so we have patients coming like once a year like the patient with scleroderma uh, we had another patient with uh, the kidney failure as well. No, 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 kidney failure. The, the, we have different patients with uh, some of them with the sclerodermia, which is an autoimmune disease that affects the, the skin. We also have multiple sclerosis patients that's have been with us more than 10 years. And they come back once a year or every two years. And every time that they come back, <coughs> they say, they feel the improvement that the stem cell give them. And they get, continue getting better. I mean, we're talking about progressive disease. To say that the disease is not progressing, that's a benefit. Just by doing that. The diabetes girl, too. <laughs> well, I mean, we have different examples that we can give you, but we have to do at least that we we'll spend some time here. I mean, just some to give you the idea. You had another question, sir? Yeah. Oh, so uh, one thing is cost, and then how do you determine cost? I don't deal with that question. <laughs> <laughs> that will All be with, with, with me. Here, here, and then I have to do with that. The, the cost varies depending on the case and what do they have to do. Uh, I'm going to give you just a, a rough uh, estimate of a, a range of cost. It can go from 3500 to 9000 and it will depend if we're treating just one knee, like two knees, if we're doing uh, neurological procedures uh, where we do like lumbar injection. Uh, if we are doing eye injection, we bring the ophthalmologist to the clinic. So we have some specialties. Uh, so it, it varies depending on the case. Uh, but that, that's a range, yeah. Of, well, how much would it cost for one procedure? Versus the U.S.? The U.S., I would say, like, the least one that I know would be 7000 and it can go to 50000 <laughs> It depending on, on the case. I, I haven't seen less than 7000 uh, but also... Sometimes they use different kind of cells. Like they do adipose. They they do different 
but yeah, so it, it would be 50% less at, at least. <laughs> Mm -hmm. How do you know if the stem cells um, are going to be effective before you pull it out of the hip and inject it? Well, we already know that we have the stem cells, let's say, stored <coughs> in our body. The cells remain with the capability to improve and to repair the tissue all the life of the other human then we know that by fact from years ago then what it happened is how the body gonna react to that cells is what it may be different but we know for sure that stem cells give that benefit it's something that is there it's present it's a really good position it's last question, last yeah. question. Uh, <clears throat> I was there actually some time ago and I read that with them. Part of the reason was I'm sure what everybody wants is longevity. And for myself, maybe this sort of that's what you think. I'm going to be turning 54. Not the worst of art, I'm doing okay. But I know slowly it's coming around. What's your true thought on longevity? I mean, they, you know, they call it anti aging, you can call it whatever you want. But from your experience yeah. of maybe seeing it or not seeing it. If, if you allow me to, do, to use a, an analogy or to make sure. the difference. It's like when you buy a new car. If you give the maintenance that it needs, that car is going to last, I don't know, 10, 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, I don't know. But if you don't treat properly, sure. that car is going to work two years, maybe something like that. Then something similar happened to our body. We know that with the aging process, the number of the cells start to move. I mean, when an infant is growing, we need a lot of stem cells active to grow. And when we are, when we get the adult age, that rhythm with the metabolism, the speed of growing of the cells adjust. Our body has certain number of stem cells that he can use, let's say in a daily basis to maintain it. What we do is to get a really large number of stem cells and put it to work together like when we were younger. That's what we, the idea that we have to do this longevity. And sometimes it's not just longevity, it's how you wanna live those years. Okay. I mean, I, I agree the end part of it is all up to you. Afterwards, if uh, you were saying earlier, it's true. A big part. Yeah, so it's not like living 100 years, it's just whatever you're going to live, but live it with quality of life, yeah, being healthy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so I do a lot of volunteer work with children with uh, disabilities, like autism specifically. So I didn't see you on your, um, on your slide in the group? that autism was not in the group. So I've been researching this for a couple of years, that's why I'm here tonight on behalf of many parents. Yeah. But so I, I mean it's all across the board you know there's some areas that you say or that you'll see that it's working but a lot of it's saying that it's not working so what has been your experience and have you actually treated um, enough people with autism mm -hmm. or children with autism to be able to make you know give us some kind of an idea if it works or not it works the problem that we have with this one is <clears throat> it affects the development on that child, and it affects in the different area, cognitive, uh, contact, social skill, and different things. Some patients improve on the cognitive side, but sometimes doesn't improve too much with the speaking, let's put it that way. Then, on the basis that it's not possible yet to cure the illness, and sometimes parents were looking that to cure the and be and have that children 100% normal. It's not possible to offer that, but it gives good results in different areas. We have, I mean, I don't have the number with me, but I can say that enough patients with autism. And unless two of those patients nowadays, they are around, one of them is around 12, 13 years old nowadays. 
at school, I think like a normal life for, for that child. Of course, it's one who sometimes say, someone can say, but it's not enough. But the other also improved. Not as much as the team, but improved. Mm -hmm. Well, because you said on your slide that you get a 95% response rate. So yes. are you getting that, whether it's all a big spectrum or not, are you getting 95% of some improvement with children with autism? And you can't say, no, I mean, we don't know yeah. who's going to get more benefit, but is that rate at 95% as well? Well, if we, say, if we use 100 patients with an illness, nowadays we can say that 95% of those patients are going to have some response. How much is going to be is different patient to patient. Some of them improve more. Some of them, like I was saying, five. And few of them, nothing. But the worst scenario is that. They don't respond. They don't improve nothing. The procedure won't damage. That's the safety that we are kind of thinking of. And how is the procedure with autism? Is that intravenous and then probably through the spinal? Depending on the age and the weight of the children, but yes, that's the idea. And it usually is on the different with the adult, the child is put it under sedation, under anesthesia. Is is the other way different? We, we try to adjust the procedure depending on the age. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly the same to everyone. There was another question over here. No? So if you want, we can stop over here with general questions. And, and now we're going to be around. If you want to ask a specific question, a private question, please come to forward with the doctor to us. And we're going to have people from our back. They're going to be sitting with you, uh, just like getting like a little gift that we have for you. And if you're interested in scheduling something, thank you for being over here. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night.